Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to talk about chirp. Not the kind of chirp you hear on CW, nor the kind of chirp that you hear from the spring birds, but the chirp, the piece of software. It's made by a company whose website is Dan Planet. It is the product of uh, volunteer work, and what it does is it provides programming software for myriad HTs, uh, all of them FM only. It, it's dabbled a little bit with DSTAR, but it's not into DMR yet. I think they need to do that, uh, or the project will gradually lose relevance, but um, it is an excellent project. And... Uh, William K-E-8-S-D-D -D, is having a little trouble with chirp. So let's take a look at it. First of all, I'm going to show you what I've got on my table here. I have an Oshing. Uh, it's spelled Wuxun, okay, but this pronunciation is apparently Oshing. And the Wuxun... Uh, normally would not be pronounced quite that way, but the Chinese version of it is pronounced Oshing. This is one of the very first Chinese radios to come into the U.S. It's a UV3D, KG UV3D, okay? And it's a nice little dual band radio. It's rather inexpensive. Right now, I've had it in storage for a while, so the battery's dead. So I'm using the battery adapter you can't plug it in directly to 12 volts, and it's got a um, cigarette lighter plug right here that'll provide the power necessary to power this. Uh, all the Chinese radios run on 7.2 volts, which is the uh, nominal, well, 7.4, okay, which is the nominal voltage of the um, lithium ion batteries that are inside. There's two cells. Um, when it charges up all the way, it's at 8.4 volts, okay? And it, it does quite well. Okay, so we've got our little radio here. It's dual band. You can do fun things with it. Um, and I've got this connected up to a bio-NO battery here that uh, will power it since the battery's out of charge. Okay, so what we're going to do Okay, so what we're going to do right now is uh, take a look at Chirp and see what we need to do uh, with it. Okay, Chirp is an open source sort of uh, project. Let's start recording here. And we'll go over to Chirp. Okay, uh, Chirp, the uh, URL for that is uh, Dan Planet, D A N. P L A N E T dot com with chirp in front of it. And the chirp homepage is this one right here. And it uh, it's free open source tool for programming your amateur radio. It supports a large number, and that's an understatement, of manufacturers and models as well as provides a way to interface with multiple data sources and formats. So if we go down here, here are the supported radio models. And let's go down in this case, there are lots of Baofengs. Look at all those. Okay. Um, we go down to Oshing, which is in the American order Oshing. Now, the radio I have is a UV3D, um, but it says to use KG UVD1P. So there's a KG uvd one p and that's what we're going to use to program this particular radio. So if we go back over to uh, Chirp, remember uh, I've said earlier that you need to go down here to um, Device Manager. And in Device Manager, I check your ports. The red cable that I'm using is Silicon Labs, and that's COM4. That's the number we need, and there's no other way of getting it other than here in Device Manager under Ports. Okay? So we'll get rid of that. 
Now, let's go over here to Chirp. And what we want to do with Chirp is uh, File, Edit, View. We're going to go to Radio, Download from Radio. Okay, COM4. And I've got the KGUVD1P in there. Okay, so I go OK. And it's got some sort of a thing. It says this is experimental. It will probably destroy your radio and uh, contribute to global warming. So you just say yes. And it tells you what to do. And now it's cloning from the radio, it's copying the radio. Okay, now, what it did was read the memory of the radio. These are the things that are in each memory. There's a lot more memories than this. I just have it listing the ones that have something. If I wanted to show empty, you see there's a lot of empty ones in there. But it's got special channels. There aren't any uh, properties, nothing special. Okay, so we've got, um, uh, we're not going to show empty, and we're just going to show the channels that I have programmed into this. Now, this is very important for this piece of software. Each line here is a memory, uh, okay? And if, for example, this one, flat top tone 107.2, it's split, okay? And this tells you what the frequency of the offset is. You just say split, and this will take care of it. The mode is FM, of course, okay. Power. This is where he was having trouble. Double click on that. High, low, high, low. You set the power level per channel, okay. Now, in some of these cases here, I have the same channel, uh, 5 8 simplex, 5 8 simplex. One with high power, one with low power, okay? And I'd make two channels out of that. So this is how you change the power in Chirp. You do it on a channel by channel basis, okay? Of course, you can operate it manually from the front panel. Note also in Chirp there are settings. And these settings um, really run the gamut of all the settings that are in the radio, and a lot of them you'll never touch. Okay, a lot of these are made for uh, commercial uh, usage if, if the radio is used by a commercial entity. The frequency ranges, I have the uh, receive ranges set wide and the transmit lower, that should be 148, shouldn't it? Transmitter upper limit, and here this should be 550. Okay, those are the limits for the channels that I want. Now, this also has FM presets. Um, these are 88.3 uh, is a local FM channel. Remember, this thing is also a FM broadcast band receiver. And here's where you put all your channels in that you want to keep for that. Okay, now we have changed what's in um, in the settings. We've changed the uh, frequency range here. So we're going to have to, one, save this. Save as. Okay. And we come over here. we got Baofeng GT5R, UV5R. I'm going to, it says down here, Oshing KV, da, 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 da. And it gives the date, 2021, um, 1004. And I'm going to save that so that I've got that in case I need that again. Now we're going to go over to the radio, upload to the radio, COM4, Oshing, UV1, I'm sorry, UVD1P, and we'll do OK. And now we get this thing here telling us that we're going to set off a volcano if we use this. So it's cloning to the radio. Now, the radio doesn't show anything special that it's being cloned to, but it is nonetheless setting up the, the radio. So what we have done is made a couple changes in here on the transmit frequency so we don't 
accidentally transmit out of band, um, but we can receive all kinds of things. This is as wide as it can receive. So um, we're really done with this. We've already saved it, so we can just uh, quit this. Now, I, I want to talk a little bit about um, Chirp just for a minute. Uh, Chirp, as I said, is an open source project. Uh, how to get Chirp. Okay, check out the how to, let's see, download Chirp for your platform. Okay, and uh, it's got to have a download right here. Okay, so you can donate. Uh, either through PayPal using a credit card or via Bitcoin if you're rich. Um, Chirp downloads, you should always be on the latest build available. You do not need to uninstall an existing copy before installing a new one. Okay. Uh, Windows users, Mac OS users, Linux users, and it's got a plea to transmitters and developers, translators and developers. And you can access old builds if you really want to, but normally you'd want to use the latest version. So you would download that from here and see, click here to download the latest Windows version. Um, you click on that and it tells you which one to download. So we'll click on that and then we get our uh, I want to put it in downloads on the D drive. Uh, chirp. I well, don't have chirp on here, so we'll add a new folder for chirp. Okay, we'll go into chirp, download that. It's a, a very quick download. All right. And it is already saved. So we're, uh, oh, it says open when done. Okay. Uh, it just takes a little bit of a minute here. The thing is growing, of course. It's 11 meg. That's not too bad. Uh, so we'll, um, we'll skip the install, I think. But you install it. I want to show you how you find it. Unless you create um, a uh, icon for your um, for your desktop, okay. To get this, you have to go in here and find uh, chirp right there. And then you can start chirp, okay, and it will be just like that. So, all right, this thing is still not downloaded all the way, so I'm not going to worry about it. I know it will work. All right, so there you you have it. I'm going to turn this off. We'll save that in a minute. Okay, so what we have done is uh, answered. Uh, William's question about how to change the power level using Chirp. You do it on a channel by channel basis. Uh, some rigs have uh, three, um, th three power levels. Uh, most rigs have two. Three power levels is becoming more common. Also becoming more common is 10 watts uh, in handhelds. And you're starting to get into RF safety issues with your head. Uh, with that much power. I wish they wouldn't put that much power in a handheld. I run mine. Uh, usually if they're 10 watts, they're also 5 and 1. So I'll run it on 5 just to cut the danger to my head in half. Okay? Um, so I think that answers your question, William. Um, we have a giveaway. This is giveaway number 3. This is for an HF SIGS. Uh, micro BITX version 6. It's got the cabinet on it, it's got a microphone, and I'll include a power cord. And um, it's already built. Uh, I did a video about it. It does work. Um, you might want to play a little bit with the coil windings, pushing them 
uh, closer together, further apart, to see if you can't get just a bit more power out of it. Uh, but uh, it's designed to be an experimenter's radio, but you can use it right out of the box. It's a nice little QRP rig that might just be your introduction to QRP. Send a QSL card, a postcard, or a single page in an envelope to Dave Kassler, KE0OG, giveaway number three, PO Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. Include on this your name and call sign and your shipping address where you want to ship to and your phone number that I can call in case I have questions. Now, at the as soon as the drawing is over, all, all the envelopes go into the shred pile. So uh, I really do uh, work at preserving your privacy. Uh, and the envelope or card or whatever from the person who wins goes in the package back to that person. So I don't keep any of those records around here so you, it won't end up on a mailing list and you won't get junk mail out of it and uh, so on. So um, thank you for watching. Please click like, please share, let other people know about this channel and you're welcome to use Ask Dave videos in club meetings for your training classes. If you put it on your club website you should use the YouTube embed feature. Uh, that way, uh, the video is actually hosted by YouTube, and I get the necessary credit for the, the video that YouTube keeps track in all of its statistics. So, there you have it. Until we next meet, 73.